The honeybee queen is the sole reproductive female in a honeybee colony. One single individual, in the middle of thousands of worker bees, is responsible for the constant generation of bees to keep the colony functioning. It is not a surprise that the destiny of a honeybee colony depends tremendously on the health of a honeybee queen. Among many environmental stresses, viruses are a major concern to compromise the queen's health and the reproductive power. In this video, I will go over the different ways a honeybee queen can get infected by viruses based on some of the recent findings in this interesting research field. Bringing this information, I hope beekeepers can come up with some new ideas to minimize virus transmission in their operations, avoiding colony losses. Also, if you want to learn more about this specific subject, at the end of this video I have an invitation for you. Welcome to InsideTheHive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. If you like bees and want to know more about them, please consider subscribing and also hit the bell button so you don't miss a single video. Beekeepers often report queen quality as one of the main factors of colony losses. A healthy honeybee queen is a combination of a good genetic profile, quality care received by workers in the larvae pupil phase, the health and fertility of the 15 or more drones she will mate with, plus the care she will receive from workers after she mates. If something goes wrong in any of these steps, the overall health of the colony will be compromised. Although the queen is protected by several social immune mechanisms in the colony, she is exposed to different environmental stresses during different life stages that possibly have negative effect on her health and quality. Among the different environmental stressors, viruses are considered to be a major concern across different stages of the queen's life. Honeybee viruses can typically be transmitted through different means. Vertically through eggs and store sperm, horizontally via trophallaxis, glandular secretions, direct body contact, vectors, or mating. A virus infection can occur very early at the beginning of the development, from infected sperm or infected ovaries. Many surveys were able to find several viruses on queen's eggs. Although the majority of egg samples screened are infected only with one virus, most typically the former wing virus, sac brood virus, or black queen cell virus, multiple virus infections are also found in honeybee eggs. So, any given fertilized virus-infected egg could potentially become a new queen, able to vertically transmit the virus infections for her entire life meaning that all honeybees in that colony could be potentially infected. This video is brought to you by our fans on Patreon. Special shout out to 18 Bees, DC Beekeepers Alliance and Union Bee Company for the support. If you want to know more about our community, please visit patreon.com slash inside the hive TV. Thank you. Honeybee viruses were also found in early larval stages of honeybee queens. This could be originated directly from the eggs, as I mentioned before, or from nurse worker bees horizontally transmitted through infected food from glandular secretions. Yes, honeybee viruses were found in the hypopharyngeal glands of worker bees as well. This suggests that nurse bees can develop latent virus infections and transmit viruses into the royal jelly that will be provided to the queen. And it is demonstrated that if the number of virus particles is big enough, it will kill the honeybee queen larvae. Here is a curious fact. Unlike in workers and drones, queen larvae cannot get viruses from varroa because varroa do not infest developing queen cells, except in extraordinary cases where the colony shows crazy mite infestation levels. As a defense mechanism for the social group, Developing queens with any disease symptoms are very likely to be destroyed by worker bees, which is great to protect the colony from a bad quality queen that will compromise the livelihood of a colony eventually. However, this defense mechanism is not perfect, 
and a queen with asymptomatic infection will pass this filter, selecting for low virulent virus infection in developing queens, which could be a direct reason why viruses are detected so sporadically in the different stages of queen development or in newly emerged queens. If you think that a newly emerged honeybee queen that has passed all these potential infection points without contracting any virus infection is free from the dangers of a virus infection, please think twice. Mating seems to be an important transmission road for viruses to infect queens. Newly merged queens, also called virgin queens, need to go outside the hive to mate with several drones, and this specific step exposes the queen to many dangers. Multiple viruses such as deformed wing virus, acute bee paralysis virus, black queen cell virus, and sac brood virus have been detected from collected semen of apparently healthy drones, providing evidence that queens can be infected by mating or instrumental insemination. Well, I will not be surprised if drones are full of viruses. Please remember that varroa mite prefer drones over worker bees to infest. In fact, the formant wing virus venereal transmission was demonstrated through artificial insemination and in free-flying mated queens. High deformed wing virus tide was also detected on semen from captured drones from drone congregational areas or from queen's spermaticus returning from their mating flights. This supports that deformed wing virus venereal transmission occurs during natural mating. As a result of venereal transmission, young mated queens are infected with more viruses than young unmated queens. What about older mated queens? Well, older mated queens tend to be infected with yet a greater number of viruses, including, again, the former wing virus, sac brood virus, black queen cell virus, and a couple others, at higher infection rates. In many cases, the same viruses detecting queen tissues can be also detected among workers of the same colony, suggesting that workers can be infected with queens through trophylaxis or body contact. Virus transmission through body contact between infected workers and queens was demonstrated for at least one honeybee virus so far, IAPV. Because queens live much longer than worker bees, Older queens will have more interaction with worker bees throughout her life in the colony, potentially accumulating viruses in an age-dependent manner. Is that the reason why honeybee queens doesn't last long anymore? To make sense of all of this for the direct impact of viruses on a honeybee queen health, I invited Dr. Ismael Yamiri, a honeybee researcher from the University of North Carolina in Greensboro, to discuss the issue with me. Dr. Amiri has been publishing interesting articles about this topic and was very generous to donate his time to discuss this with all of us. It is an important subject in beekeeping and honeybee research. If you want to participate in this discussion by watching this live stream on YouTube and Facebook, please register to the event using the link in the description of this video or visiting insidethehive.tv slash livestreams. The event is scheduled for Saturday, May 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It is free to everyone and donations will be reverted to b4development.org. If you have some extra time, please consider watching the videos in the screen right now, like and subscribe if you didn't already, and I will see you in the next video, insidethehive.tv, the show about bees.